risk management application of forward and future strategy. It, this topic can be seen as a uh, break from your level 3 studies. For a change, we don't have much of a theory. Okay, it's a purely uh, number crunching, number intensive topic. And the entire topic is based on only one formula. Okay, so only one formula and then there are about six to seven LOS. But if you know that formula, you can solve all possible types of questions. Let's see how does it work now. First thing that we will learn is if we have a spot price, if we have RFR, if we have dividend yield, how do we find out a forward price? Okay. So let's, let's build a hypothetical scenario. Let us say spot price is 1000. RFR assuming continuous compounding is 6%. Dividend yield assuming continuous compounding again is 2%. And maturity of the forward contract is six months. Then how you would find forward price? You would say forward is equal to spot into E raise to whatever is your RFR minus the dividend yield multiplied with the time period T. In this case, spot price is going to be 1000 into E raise to difference of these two is 4%. And since the maturity is six months, that would be into 5.5, which would give us a forward price of 1020. Are we okay with this concept? Now, second background working that we need to do is understanding of the concept beta. Okay. So by any chance you remember how uh, beta was calculated? Yes, covariance divided by variance. Covariance between return on, let's say stock S and market M and variance of market. Now, another way of way in which you can think of beta. This is what we learned at level one. We drew a line which was called security characteristic line. Neitha? <laughs> security characteristic line. What do we put on x axis? We put percentage of return on market. What we put on y axis is percentage of return on a particular stock of whom we want to calculate beta. And then we draw a line. Right? Maybe the values could be something like this. So we try to draw a line, which we've also learned at level two, we call this as regression. The slope of this line is the beta of that particular stock. And of course, beta reflects what kind of risk? Market risk or system, systematic risk. The risk that cannot be diversified away. Okay. Now, once we know this, the third concept that now we will see is the concept of cross hedging. Okay, And this is the formula that would be repeated throughout this reading. So what is the meaning of cross hedging? Let us say you have exposure to security X. You want to mitigate that exposure. That means you do not want to be exposed to that risk of security X. However, there is no other instrument available of security X, X on which you can take opposite position. So what you do is you take security Y. Security X has some risk characteristic R. And security Y has risk characteristics. Let me call them as RX and RY. How do you use the risk characteristics of security Y, the price of security Y, and create a position in such a way in the opposite direction that the risk exposure to security X is nullified? For example, let us say you have exposure to Sensex, okay, broad market index in India. And you want to mitigate your exposure to beta of Sensex. However, there is no uh, future contract available on Sensex. I'm just creating a hypothetical scenario. So you take some other security. Let's say uh, other security would be the banking index. Okay. So you find out what was the beta of Sensex. What is the beta of this particular banking index? 
what is the price of the sensex what is the value of the sensex value of the few banking index and then you create opposite position on the banking index in such a way that your beta of sensex is nullified this is called as cross hedging is it making sense so what it is beta in this case beta because that's the risk we will be trying to eliminate Yeah, same. Exactly same. Yes. What she's saying is, if uh, they want to hedge the cost of oil, and there is no uh, direct security available on oil, assuming a hypothetical scenario, then you take some other security, and using that security, you hedge the risk. So that is quite feasible. Okay. So should we do an example now? Let us say a particular manager has exposure. to mcdonald's stock and total value of exposure that he has is 20 million dollars beta of mcdonald's i don't know it i'm just making it up let us say is 1.7 now what he wants to do is he wants to reduce the beta of his portfolio to zero okay this is the first scenario now he want to reduce the beta to zero by using s&p 500 future contracts now each s&p future contract has a value of 2700 it has a lot size again i'm just making it up it has a lot size let us say of 50 and it has a beta exposure of now on your exam there are two possible scenarios either they would not mention the beta exposure at all and in that case if they don't mention since you know it is the s&p which is a broad market index then you will assume that exposure to be 1 but if the beta exposure is mentioned and it is not necessary that future contract will have a beta of 1 the underlying broad market index will have a beta of 1 but future contract can have a beta of let's say 1.1 okay now we want to make the beta of our portfolio zero since we have a long position on mcdonalds if we take short position on the s&p futures in such a way that beta gets nullified then the beta of the portfolio would be zero so how do you do that you do it in this fashion how much beta do we want to nullify 1.7 into the 20 million this is the beta value exposure that you have right now divided by size of one contract of s&p is 2700 into 50 but each contract provides us a beta exposure of 1.1 can you please find out how much would that be Two to eight nine point five six. Is it? Yeah, correct. Two to eight point nine five. So therefore, we will have to take short position on two hundred and twenty nine S and P future contracts. So again, we know that it's not a perfect hedge because we cannot short the contract in decimals. Is is the intuition fine? Now, what if the question said that we do not want to reduce beta exposure to zero? We wanted to reduce. that beta exposure to let us say 1.2 so from 1.7 we want to reduce it to 1.2 so this numerator which was 1.7 right now this we will replace and instead of that we will say 1.7 minus 1.2 
right? But that means we want to reduce equivalent of 0.5 into 20 million worth of beta. So you adjust that formula in the numerator. Rest all calculations would be exactly same. And if you've understood this formula, the rest of the reading is going to be a really smooth right? How much is that? 67.34. So in this case now we would short 67 contracts.